This is Ghost of Tsushima and with its release on PC, you know I had to jump back into it because this game is special and no, I don't mean retire. Alright, let's get the most obvious thing out of the way first. This game is an absolute beauty. So much so that it even looks better than your mother's booty. Whether it be areas that have suffered the toll of war or the ones that still retain the beauty of the island of Tsushima, there is so much location variety in this game and every place is just breathtaking. The texture work is perfect, the character models are lifelike, the lighting is outstanding, the particle effects are some of the best in the entire industry, the way the environment reacts to stuff with its foliage and other elements is dynamic as fuck. That's what we like to see! I love the weather effects, I love how the blood splatters and stains the ground, I love how this game isn't afraid to be vibrant. It is just bursting with colors. This is the kind of game that makes you glad you have an OLED display. The way it uses and changes its color tones and sets and atmosphere is simply masterful. It is the perfect example of what is possible when realistic graphics are paired with an actual artistic vision. I know this statement is a bit overused by now, but this game really really does look like a painting come to life. Ghost of Tsushima is most definitely a contender for the title of best looking game ever made. And the performance is also really good all across the board. The PC port is nice even on slightly lower end systems and offers a good amount of freedom to tweak settings. There are a few visual bugs and a bit of micro stuttering here and there, but it will hopefully be fixed in an update. On PlayStation 4 there are some very occasional but noticeable frame drops, especially during the very big battle scenarios where there are a ton of enemies on screen but but for the most part, it's a rock solid 30 FPS. On PS5, there is no such issue, and it is a 4K 60 FPS experience from the beginning to the end. Stealth combat involves you sneaking around and taking out enemies like Feudal Japan's Batman, and that is not an analogy, it's a comparison. Also, now that this game is out on PC, we really need to get this skin into this game. Modders, please. There are many different types of stealth takedowns, like the multi takedown, which is basically the fear takedown from Arkham Knight, because it also scares the shit out of enemies. Your grab grappling hook allows you to get to vantage points quicker and also do stuff like this. You have different tools at your disposal like the two different types of bows you get which both offer regular as well as their own specific special arrows like fire and explosive arrows. Kunais are your throwable knives, there's the smoke bomb. And the sticky bomb, and I'm not talking about the shit you take after eating Mexican food. Now I'ma be honest here, while it can be fun, the stealth is very basic and the enemies aren't smart. In fact, they can be straight up Beetlejuice levels of stupid. Here you go buddy, catch this. <laughs> he just can't be bothered. The head-on combat is the bread and butter of this game. You have your basic light and heavy attacks, blocking, dodging, rolling and parrying which is comingly satisfying. <laughs> The best part about this game's combat are the four different combat stances that you can unlock by killing or observing various leaders. Each stance has its own upgrades and moves which are catered towards being particularly effective against specific enemy types. For example, the moon stance against big chungus enemies, wind stance against enemies with spears, stone stance for enemies with swords, and water stance against enemies with shields. This combat system is what happens when challenge, complexity, and game feel decide to BOOM! Above your health meter you have your resolve which fills up through combat actions like perfect parry skills and more. You can use this resolve to heal, revive and perform various special attacks. And now that I've mentioned it, you can unlock so many different moves here like the running strikes, the 5 piece special combo and even this. I don't even remember what this is called but damn it it's the coolest shit ever. Also every tool I talked about in the stealth section is usable here too and dare I say even more fun to use. You can light your sword on fire and roast your ops harder than Kendrick did to Drake. But guys my personal favorite move in the game is the HBK special. Every move combos with another seamlessly giving a ton of freedom to the player to fight in their own way. Like here I go from stealth headshotting this archer and then this queso looking dude to blowing up an enemy vehicle to then rushing inside to get this man in contact with his maker. Or here where I dodge this dude's arrow, rush to end him then immediately hit this other dude with a zoom zoom dash strike, then take a step back, break everyone's guard with a kunai and then banish them to the shadow realm. You should really check out my Ghost of Tsushima X Doom video for some crazy ass clips. Once you kill enough enemies without taking damage, you can enter the ghost stance. <laughs> 
This makes the enemies scared for their miserable lives while turning Jin into a walking insta-kill embodiment of terror. Ghost of Tsushima is one of those games that is meant to be played on the harder difficulties. It is such a different and better way to play because this is one of the handful of games where the developers actually give a shit about the difficulty experience rather than turning a few sliders up and down. Believe me, the more you start paying attention to this while playing games, the more you'll realize how incredibly rare this quality is to come by. This progression system is genuinely fantastic and there is no stupid ass level gating. Leveling up gives you skill points for actually meaningful skills and unlocks new tools and techniques like being able to block attacks that you previously couldn't. Armors and charms give you different bonuses which actually make a very noticeable difference, allowing you to experiment and find your own favorite builds. There's also different armor and equipment upgrades but I'll talk more about those in the open world section of this video. There's also no hit sponge bullshit going on here because Ghost of Tsushima doesn't need that sort of artificial difficulty. If you die faster, the enemies will die faster too. And about that, enemy variety is great and an essential part of this gameplay experience. While fighting so many enemies at once, you always need to be on your toes, paying attention to everyone's callouts and movement on screen, strategically prioritizing who to take out at any given moment on the go while constantly switching stances and attacks according to that. And I meant it when I said that you need to do this because remember when I said they can be straight up Beetlejuice levels of stupid. Well during head on combat however, they are fucking animals. Not literally guys. Bestiality is bad. Is it really it, bad? Yeah it is. Because I've seen a video right where the dog's clearly having a good time. <laughs> and yet, cause, cause like they come after you like fiends when they see a needle near a trash can. There were times where I was getting straight up wombo comboed by these fools. Sometimes when I died the kill animation took a while to trigger so in the meanwhile they just kept disrespecting my ass bruh. Just end it please. This particular way of challenging the players does three great things while also feeling fair. One, it always and I mean always keeps the combat interesting and engaging. Two, it pushes the skill ceiling of the game higher making it progressively more difficult as you go. And three, once you do start getting better and get good if I may, there is no feeling more rewarding than going into an enemy territory and straight up bullying anyone who comes in your way. I have spent an unhealthy amount of time trying to get better at this game, replaying the same outposts over and over again until I complete them without getting hit. But the thing is, if you love this game's combat enough to actively keep learning, it actually loves you back unlike your parents. Because when you're completely surrounded and are still, untouchable, untouchable. it makes you feel like a god. Then you learn to perform animation cancelling moves like this. You start combining different stances to create various combos and even finding ways of using moves from all stances against all enemy types. The HUD is kept to a minimum for maximum immersion, the animations are impeccable, the sense of impact is god tier with the perfect visual and audio effects combined with the haptic feedback. Entering a standoff and wiping the entire squad right then and there, being near death and whipping out a special move to end the fight, slaughtering a leader in front of his men and then watch them shit their pants as you approach is one of the best times that I have had playing a game in recent memory. It just has that damn that's cool factor nailed like G. By the way, if you're enjoying this video till now, please be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it, my dudes. And damn it, I haven't even mentioned the boss fight duels yet, bro. This is cinema. Mano a mano, blood, sweat, tears and cum flowing all over the place type of action where you die and die again until you download the enemy's moveset and finally end it. <laughs> Absolute peak. All of it is so unbelievably visually, audibly, and mechanically amazing. Challenging, thrilling, blood pumping, and satisfying are just some of the terms that I would use to describe this game's combat and sex with your sister. Like this is without a doubt one of the best combat systems I've ever laid my testosterone fueled hands on. It just never gets old, man. Now with all that being said, it does have its issues. What the hell is this dude even doing, bruh? The real big problem this game's combat combat has is the camera. Oh my god, it is downright broken at times. How am I supposed to save Sushima when this camera won't even let me save my sorry ass? What the hell is that dude Hawker or some shit? How the hell did he shoot me through the curtain? This camera f 
flipped me over so many times and just had me screaming at my screen. Get the fuck out of the way! I can't see! But coming back, you know what makes the combat in literally every other part of Ghost of Tsushima better? The eargasmic music, bro. This game might not be perfect, but its soundtrack is. Every track creates an atmosphere with a symphony of tunes that hit harder than a stepdad's belt. Seriously, when this soundtrack does get going, it makes the gameplay and story moments 10 times better. But another thing that needs to be praised is that it knows when to be absent, just like the fathers of popular girls in school. It strikes a great balance between blasting through the door to make shit epic and then taking a backseat by letting the fantastic ambient sounds of the world work their magic to completely immerse the players. Now that I mentioned it, let's discuss the open world. Ghost of Tsushima has one of the most immersive game worlds I have ever ever experienced. It is one of those rare times where I lost track of time playing a video game. There's various shrines, statues and other structures that do a good job of getting the player familiar with the culture of this game's world and there are even references to Logan Paul here. When you are roaming through these beautiful lands and then come across sites like this, it genuinely hits you hard with the realization of what these Mongol bastards are doing to these people's home. In addition to the graphics, art style and music I talked about, there are so many smart decisions taken with the UI of this game. There's no mini-map so when you want to know where to go, you just swipe up on the controller and the wind guides you to it. Just moving around you might come across a group of Mongols holding someone hostage so you decide to step in and send them Goodbye, my nigga, back to the lobby. and then save the hostage. You spot a fox and following it leads you to its den or another similar place where you can receive items such as charms or skins for your sword covers. You see a bird soar by you, decide to follow it and it takes you to a hot spring which increases your health in game as well as real life by gracing you with Jin's butt cheeks or to a bamboo strike which increases your resolve or even to a full-blown side quest. You see smoke coming from the distance so you head to it to find out if Snoop Dogg has a cameo in the game Who? and then find yourself at an enemy outpost where you are then free to take him all out however you please. You can also sit down at certain spots to compose haikus and while in other games I find shit like this mundane and pointless, here it just fits like a natural part of the game game and the tone it's going for. You see a place that is high up on a mountain decide to go on a journey to it becoming half Spider-Man on the way and it rewards you for it with a max level charm or another similar item. The exploration part of it all is just so seamless, natural and rewarding. But it does have a problem as big as this specimen right here. There was no reason on God's green earth to have 18 of these hot springs, 22 of these haiku spots and 49 of these fox dens on the map. Holy shit bro, this is copy paste content at its peak out here making Ubisoft blush. And I wouldn't have had any problem with this if it was actually fun to play like the Mongol settlements are because of the combat or at the very least engaging like the mountaintop shrines are. But here, it's just go here, follow these foxes for a bit, play the same animation, receive a charm and then rinse and repeat again. Again and again, again and again and again until we're both dead. Is that what you want? Ghost of Tsushima is one of those games where I genuinely want to ride through the vast open fields as Jin runs his hand through the vegetation. I genuinely want to stop and take in all of the scenery in front of me. I genuinely want to walk menacingly towards my opponent before challenging him to a duel to the death in front of a raging sea and underneath the stormy skies. How poetic. This game doesn't need cutscenes to be cinematic because the gameplay itself is so cinematic and I love that. However, that immersion just f***ing evaporates the moment you spend any time with a normal NPC. This dude's gotta be the most dedicated worker in all of Tsushima. Look at him go, what an absolute chad. Your main modes of moving around in this open world are your trusty horse and good old fashioned I will say that the movement does feel clunky in some spots, like it seems as if you're fighting with the game to control your character. Also this traversal isn't anything that will be too mechanically satisfying like some other open world traversal systems and I did find myself using the almost instant fast travel feature quite a bit. While moving through this open world and doing the activities I mentioned before, you can earn resources which you can use to buy different ammos and cosmetics for Jin and his weapons. You also use these resources to upgrade your weapons and armors which you obtain 
gain by completing missions. Now I'll talk about the main missions in the story section of this video, but for now, let's take a look at the side missions. There are two main types of side missions here. First, the Tales of Tsushima. These are standalone side missions with their own short and sweet stories which really give you a look into the lives of local people who are affected by the war. They usually focus on telling a very condensed story and the strengths of the game like the combat. The only real problems I have with them is the lack of any real cutscenes most of the times which would have made some of the missions way more memorable than they are. And also the fact that a lot of them require you to track someone by examining clues and following footsteps which is just fucking boring here man. The only game to make this sort of tracking fun is The Witcher 3 and you can watch my video on it right here. And second, The Mythic Tales. These are side stories which span across multiple missions involving important side characters from the main story and various legends from Tsushima's past and present. These ones do have cutscenes and actually feel very important to the overall experience. In fact, some of my favorite moments from the entire storyline reside in these missions. Not to mention, completing them unlocks some of the best armors and moves in the game like the flaming sword and the other special moves I mentioned before. But these also suffer from similar kinds of problems that I talked about in the first type of side missions. Many times you have to go through this GTA ass mission design where you start a mission somewhere and then have to follow someone to where the mission actually starts which really overstays its welcome, especially around my second time playing this game. The only good thing about the game during these moments is the writing which perfectly leads us into... Mongol Empire is invading our home. The story of Ghost of Tsushima is set in 1274 during the first Mongol invasion of Japan. You play as Jin Sakai, a samurai warrior who rides into battle with his fellow samurais including his uncle Lord Shimura who is the leader. It is right here when we meet the main villain of the game for the first time. <laughs> and I'll just let him introduce himself. I am Kotan, cousin of Kublai, grandson of Genghis. That dude from Night at the Museum. Why, Yokota? Musi, musi, lagabo! Musi, musi, masa, murlu, burlu, papa, poo! Blue! Huh? After a big battle, unfortunately the samurais get outnumbered and dookied on and Jin gets shot in the back with arrows while his uncle gets captured by the Khan. After a flashback of his past, Jin wakes up to find out that he was saved by a common thief called Yuna. After sneaking around a bit, retrieving his sword and saving a village from the Mongols, Jin sets out to take on the Khan who's taken over a fort and at this point I was like, I appreciate the enthusiasm little bro, but weren't you just in a coma like 5 minutes ago? After busting in and whooping a few Mongols, he finally comes face to face with the Khan with his captive uncle there to watch and uh... Not a great plan. Jin's plot armor saves him again and he regroups with Yuna. From here Jin realizes that he'll need to outplay the Khan like a pro gamer and that he needs allies to fight this battle with him. I need to find more allies. Train warriors. So our samurai hero sets out again and we're finally greeted with one of the best opening titles in the history of gaming. Not gonna lie, this shit straight up had me like I get those goosebumps every time. The rest is up to you to find out and I won't spoil anything major. Ghost of Tsushima has one of the best executed stories that have ever graced the medium of video games. It is such a simple yet effective story which weaves a tale of honor, sacrifice and the struggle to protect one's home against overwhelming odds. And the best part is, none of it comes at the cost of gameplay. Although there are a few bad missions here like come on bruh, just because people call you the best Assassin's Creed game doesn't mean you gotta have shitty ass tailing missions too. Most of the times the main missions are very good because of the core gameplay and and story. There are times where you get to be a part of straight up wars. Hey everybody get me today, I'm shooting anything that moves. The perfect music, the beautiful Kurosawa inspired cinematography, the superb acting and the excellent memorable dialogue. I trained you to fight with honor. Honor died on the beach. This is cinema. Jin is a smart, skilled and competent warrior with a good heart who just wants to save his people. The flashbacks that happen are a nice dive into his mind which explore his beliefs and how he is straying further from his teachings. And I don't get why some people call him and his character boring, he's far from it. This dude is a straight up badass. I once impaled a man with a wooden sword, did it when I was 13. And you're still bragging about it? <laughs> These are disciplined, stoic warriors who have been taught for their entire lives to keep their emotions in check. To master your blade, you must first control 
your emotions. I mean, of course, sometimes their guard breaks in extremely heavy hearted moments, but what the hell y'all want them to do? Constantly keep emoting like a fucking TikToker or some shit? Throughout the story, you see Jin reluctantly going against his samurai code using dishonorable stealth tactics, while those around him keep piling up pressure on him to do things their way, and those people, they are right in their own way. The characters act like real humans would, they make mistakes and have to face severe consequences for them. With all the pathetic beta male soft shit coming out now, Nowadays, I love the fact that Ghost of Tsushima doesn't pull its punches. Lord Shimura is so well written and he's probably my favorite character in the entire game. We are samurai! He represents a true strong samurai leader while also being an ideal father figure for Jin. The villain is also portrayed really well as a cunning and capable bad mother He is so much fun to have on screen at any given time. I know your language, your traditions. Your beliefs, which villages to tame and which to burn. Like you really want to pull up on this dude and rip him a new one. Yes, there is this huge threat looming over Jin's home, but the beating heart of this story is Jin's own personal struggle. The main question Ghost of Tsushima's story dares to ask is, when faced with an overwhelming threat, should you do what's honorable or what's best for survival? Sometimes when you're staring death in the face, you have to do whatever it takes to survive. Yuna represents the desperation of these normal people, while Lord Shimura represents the discipline and learnings of a true samurai. This is what makes us samurai. Only cowards strike from the shadows. This clash of ideologies and Jin's transformation into the ghost is built up gradually and naturally and it is the best part of this tale. This game really does make you feel for its characters and events. And oh my god bro, that ending will forever live in my head rent free. Now I do think that the pacing is kinda inconsistent at certain parts and the story moves too slow for my taste at points. It kinda takes away from the urgency of the situation. This could have been improved by removing a bit of filler from the game. I mean it is very fun gameplay wise of course but I am just talking about how it affects the story. But the biggest disappointment I have with this game is the missed opportunity of including a system where your actions during gameplay affect how people treat you in the story. This was kind of an immersion breaking thing for me. I'd be playing the entire thing as an honorable samurai because of how much more fun the head-on combat is compared to the stealth but during cutscenes people still treat me like I'm some dishonorable piece of shit. I mean sure I get this happening when the game forces you to do something like that but I would rather have that replaced with the ability to make my own decisions through how I play the game. A system like this would have actively encouraged players to pick a style and stick with it while also improving the replayability of the story substantially. Overall, I still love this story, it's just that this would have taken it to the next level. Now before we get to my final thoughts, let's quickly run through the DLCs. Now something monstrous has taken root on Iki Island. I have to go back. In the Iki Island expansion, Jin has to travel to Iki Island to save it from this evil ass witch lady who uses her poison to cause Jin to trip balls throughout the DLC. Gameplay wise it's a new location with a new enemy type in the form of shamans that buff enemies. New armors, new side missions, new challenges, hell there's even a fight club in the game now. It's mainly more of the same with just a few additions which is a good thing in this game's case that's what I'm trying to say. I also really like how this DLC dives even further into Jin's psyche and evolves his character even further. Legend is the free multiplayer mode of Ghost of Tsushima and if I was to cover this in detail, it would take an entire separate video. So all I'll say for now is, just play it dude, it's so f***ing good and different from the base game with different classes, moves and progression. And best of all, it is completely free if you own the main game. In conclusion, Ghost of Tsushima is a captivating journey through feudal Japan where the samurai code clashes with the necessity for survival. It takes elements from other games and puts its own spin on it to craft one of of the most immersive experiences I've ever had playing a game. It does have its flaws like I talked about in the video, but they can't change the fact that this is one of the best modern day video games. This upcoming piece of Ubisoft trash ain't even gonna come close to licking the boots of this game bro. That intro sequence is reason enough to play this game, but the tale of the ghost is something that I think that everyone should experience at least once in their lifetime. Thank you so much for watching everyone, see you next time.